Hi, welcome to the next section, Asynchronous Network Programming Using Tokyo. Rust provides a few crates that support asynchronous program using a futures-based, event-loop-driven model. We'll study that in detail in this section. Now we move on to the first video of this section, looking into the future. The backbone of Rust's asynchronous programming story is the futures crate. This crate provides a construct called future. This is essentially a placeholder for the result of an operation. As you would expect, the result of an operation can be in one of two states. Either the operation is still in progress and the result is not yet available, or the operation is finished and the result is available. Note that in the second case, there might have been an error, making the result immaterial. It's easy to note that a future is essentially a result that might still be running something to actually produce that result. If one removes the case that the result might not be ready at any point in time, the only two options we have left are with the OK and ARR cases, which exactly correspond to a result. Thus, a future can represent anything that takes a non-trivial amount of time to complete. This can be a networking event, a disk read, and so on. Now, the most common question at this point is, how do we return a future from a given function? There are a few ways of doing that. Let's look at an example here. The project setup is the same as it always is. As I've already made it, I'll directly open the file. We've added these libraries in our cargo config. In our main file, we need to set up everything as usual. So let's open main.rs file. We're interested in finding out whether a given integer is a prime or not, and this will represent the part of our operation that takes some time to complete. We have two functions doing exactly that. These two use two different styles of returning features, as we'll see later. There are a few major ways of returning features. The first one is using trait objects, as done in check underscore prime underscore box. Now, box is a pointer type pointing to an object on the heap. It's a managed pointer in the sense that the object will be automatically cleaned up when it goes out of scope. The return type of the function is a trait object, which can represent any future that has its item set to bool and error set to IO error. Thus, this represents dynamic dispatch. The second way of returning a future is using the implement trait feature. In the case of check underscore prime underscore implement underscore trait, that's what we do. We say that the function returns a type that implements future item bool, error, quals, IO error, and as any type that implements the future trait is a future, our function is returning a future. Note that in this case, we do not need to box before returning the result. Thus, an advantage of this approach is that no allocation is necessary for returning the future. Both of our functions use the future OK function to signal that our computation is finished successfully with the given result. Another option is to not actually return a future and to use the futures-based thread pull crate to do the heavy lifting toward creating a future and managing it. This is the case with check underscore prime that just returns a bool. In our main function, we set up a thread pool using the futures-cpu pull crate, and we run the last function in that pool. We get back a future on which we can call wait to get the result. A totally different option for achieving the same goal is to return a custom type that implements the future trait. This one is the least ergonomic, as it involves writing some extra code, but it is the most flexible approach. Having constructed a future, the next goal is to execute it. There are three ways of doing this. In the current thread, this will end up blocking the current thread till the future has finished executing. In a thread pool, this is the case in which the calling thread is free to move on with its own processing. In an event loop, in some cases, neither of the above is possible. The only option then is to execute futures in an event loop. Conveniently, the Tokyo dash core crate provides futures friendly APIs to use event loops. When we run this, we get to see such a result. What sets futures apart from regular threads is that they can be chained ergonomically. Each of these steps in series is a future and the next one cannot start unless the first one is finished. The whole operation is a future as well, being made up of a number of constituent features. When this larger future is being executed, it's called a task. Let's look at an example of implementing a timeout functionality using chaining. 
let's start with the project setup. We then open our cargo.toml. We use the Tokyo-Timer crate for the timeout feature, and in our code we have two competing functions that sleep for a random amount of time and then return a fixed string to the caller. Like last time, we use a thread pool to execute our futures using the futures-cpu pool crate. Let's look at the code of the main.rs file. Our two players are very similar. Both of them generate a random number between 1 and 5, and sleep for that amount of seconds. After that, they return a fixed string corresponding to their names. We'll later use these strings to identify them uniquely. We also initialize the thread pool and the timer. We use the combinator on the timer to return a future that errors out after 3 seconds. We then spawn the two players in the thread pool and return results from those as futures. Note that those functions are not really running at this point because futures are lazily evaluated. We then put those futures in a list and use the select underscore OK combinator to run those in parallel. This function takes in an iterable of futures and selects the first successful future. We chain the result of select underscore OK to the timeout future using the select combinator that takes two futures and waits for either of them to finish executing. The resultant future will have one that has finished and one that hasn't. We then use the map combinator to discard the second part. Finally, we block on our futures and signal the end of the chain using OK. We can then compare the result with the known strings to determine which future has won and print out the message accordingly. Let's run this a few times. At the end of the run, player 1 emerges as winner. As our timeout is smaller than the maximum sleep period of either of the two functions, we should see a few timeouts. Whenever a function chooses a time less than the timeout, it gets a shot at winning. The futures crate provides another useful abstraction for a lazily evaluated series of events, called stream. If future corresponds to result, a stream corresponds to iterator. Semantically, they're very similar to futures, and they look like this. Let's look at an example of using this construct. We'll partially reuse our collats example from a previous section. The first step is to set up the project. Since I already created it, I'll show you the code directly. With all the dependencies added, our cargo config looks like this. Having set everything up, our main file will look as follows. In this case, we have a struct called collat stream that has two fields for the current state and the end state, which should always be one. We implement the stream trait on this to make this behave as a stream. We simulate a delay in returning the result by sleeping from a random amount of time between 1 and 5 seconds. Our implementation for the poll returns OK async ready none to signal that the stream has finished when it reaches 1. Otherwise, it returns the current state as OK async ready sum self.current. It's easy to note that, except for this stream semantics, this implementation is the same as that for iterators. In our main function, we initialize the struct and use the for underscore each combinator to print out each item in the stream. This combinator returns a future on which we call wait and OK to block and get all results. Here's what we see on running this example. As it is with the future trait, the stream trait also supports a number of other combinators useful for different purposes. The dual of a stream is a sync, which is a receiver of asynchronous events. This is extremely useful in modeling the sending end of rush channels, network sockets, file descriptors, and so on. A common pattern in any asynchronous system is synchronization. This becomes important as more often than not, components need to communicate with one another to pass data or coordinate tasks. We solved this exact problem in the past using channels. But those constructions are not applicable here, as the channel implementation in the standard library is not asynchronous. Thus, Futures has its own channel implementation, which provides all the guarantees you would expect from an asynchronous system. Let's look at an example. Our project setup should look like this. Cargo config of this Futures ping pong should look like this. Now, we open the main.rs file. Here we have two functions. One waits for a random amount of time, and then randomly returns either ping or pong. This function will be our sender. 
The Futures Crate provides two types of channel, a one-shot channel that can be used only once to send and receive any messages, and a regular MPSC channel that can be used multiple times. In our main function, we get hold of both ends of the channel and spawn our sender in another thread as a future. If it is spawned in another thread, in both cases we record the handles to be able to wait for them to finish, using join later. Note that our receiver takes in the receiving end of the channel as parameter. Because receiver implements stream, we can use the and underscore then combinator on it to print out the value. Finally, we call wait and OK on the future before exiting the receiver function. In the main function, we join on the two thread handles to drive them to completion. Running the last example will randomly print either ping or pong, depending on what was sent by the channel. Note that the actual printing happens on the receiving end. The futures crate also provides a locking mechanism in futures sync by lock that closely mirrors STD sync mutex. This is a future aware mutex that arbitrates sharing a resource between two owners. Note that a by lock is only for two futures, which is an annoying limitation. Here's how it works. We're interested in modifying our last example to show a counter when the sender function is called. Now our counter needs to be thread safe so that it can be shared across consumers. Our cargo.toml file should be exactly the same. And here is how the main file looks. While this is basically the same as the last example, there are some differences. In our main function, we set the counter to zero. We then create a by lock on the counter. The constructor returns two handles like a channel, which we can then pass around. We then create our channel and spawn the sender. Now, if we look at the sender, it's been modified to take in a reference to a by lock. In the function, we attempt to acquire a lock using pole underscore lock, and if that works, we increment the counter. Otherwise, we do nothing. We then move on to our usual business of returning ping or pong. The receiver has been modified to take a by lock as well. In that, we try to acquire a lock, and if successful, we print out the value of the data being locked. In our main function, we spawn these features using threads and join on them to wait for those to finish. Running it gives an error. Let's go and resolve it. Let's add the dependencies in the cargo.toml files and again change the future to futures. Here's what a good run looks like. Here's what happens on an unsuccessful run when both parties fail to acquire the lock. In a real example, we would want to handle the error gracefully and retry. 